Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and happy Wednesday. I am so excited to welcome you to today's Winning at Wellness webinar, School's Vital Role in Supporting Nutrition Security. This webinar is part of the California Local School Wellness Policy Collaborative and its Winning at Wellness webinar series. Before we get started, there are a few housekeeping items I'd like to go over. So first, your audio connection is through your microphone and speakers on your computer or your mobile device. If you're having difficulty with audio, click on the arrow next to the mute button and select test speaker and microphone, and then just follow the prompts to connect your audio. It is important to keep your mic muted to eliminate any background noise. And time has been reserved at the end of the presentation to answer any of your questions. Um, feel free to use the chat box to submit your questions throughout the webinar and our host Bailey will get to them. And then a link to the webinar recording and a PDF of the presentation slides will be emailed to you afterwards. You may earn one hour of school nutrition programs professional standards for participating in this webinar. Here are the key areas, training topics, and learning objectives for your reference. I will be moderating today's webinar. My name is Jamie Lamb. I am a project manager at Dairy Council of California, and I am also a chair for one of the domains part of the California Local School Wellness Policy Collaborative. For today's webinar, we'll have a panel of four fabulous speakers who will share on their work in promoting and protecting access to nutrition and food security through schools and nutrition hubs. Each speaker will have the floor for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we will open it up for question and answer. Questions may be directed to a specific speaker or all speakers, and you may ask your question by typing it into the chat or coming off mute. So by the end of this webinar, you will be able to define nutrition security and school nutrition hubs, identify innovative and impactful strategies to support schools and nutrition hubs, and lastly, brainstorm ways to bring nutrition hubs into your school or community using available resources. So you may have heard me mention the collaborative a few times now. For those of you who are not familiar, the California Local School Wellness Policy Collaborative is a statewide collaborative that brings together leaders and commit, who are committed to improving student wellness and academic success. Our vision is to inspire school communities to take their wellness policies from paper to practice. Our mission is to be the catalyst for school communities and stakeholders to implement highly effective local school wellness policies and California schools to support student health and academic achievement. And our goals is to build broad support for local school wellness policy implementation and assist districts in revising their wellness policies. The collaborative works through three separate domains. The first one is to promote and protect access to nutrition and food security. The second is local school wellness policy implementation and evaluation. And the third is whole school, whole child, whole community. So to set the stage for today's webinar, let's first distinguish between food and nutrition security. According to the USDA, food security for our household means access by all members at all times to enough food for an active, healthy life. At a minimum, food security includes the readily availability of nutritionally adequate and safe foods and assured ability to acquire acceptable foods in socially acceptable ways. On the other hand, nutrition security means having consistent access, availability, and affordability of foods and beverages that promote well being and prevent disease, particularly among racial, ethnic minority populations, lower income populations, and rural and remote populations. Nutrition security builds on and complements efforts to address food security by better recognizing the coexistence of food insecurity and diet-related diseases and disparities. And school nutrition hubs help children access the nutrition they need throughout the year by operating all available federal child nutrition programs, such as the ones listed. As schools expand their meal service due to universal meals, we do anticipate the interest in providing access to meals outside the school day growing as well. And some schools may even go above and beyond by not only implementing some of these nutrition programs, but also engaging with their community and partners inside and outside the school. 
So now I would like to introduce today's speakers who will share more on their work around food and nutrition security. Please join me in welcoming Janelle Manzano with San Diego Unified School District, Amanda Harvey with Fresno Unified School District, Imogene Nelson from Fresno Metro Ministry, and Yusuf Buzayan of Community Alliance with Family Farmers. First to kick us off, we have Yusuf. Take it away, Yusuf. Thank you, Jamie, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Jamie mentioned, my name is Yusuf Buzayan. I am a farm to market senior manager with the Community Alliance with Family Farmers. We are a statewide nonprofit dedicated to supporting small and mid-scale fa uh, family farmers. We're based in Davis, California, uh, and we're a 45-year-old nonprofit. This is actually our 45th anniversary this year. Um, CAF advocates for family farmers and sustainable agriculture through policy and programs. We're building a movement that fosters family-scale agriculture that cares for the land, sustains local economies, and promotes social justice. And one of the ways we do that is by connecting farmers with uh, buyers, such as school districts, and by supporting uh, farm, to, farm to school programs. Um, but before we get into kind of the farm to school piece and my discussions around uh, how to procure locally, I first wanted to uh, discuss um, the importance of local food in and of itself. So uh, I think a lot of you are already practitioners and supporters of local, um, local agriculture, but just as a reminder, um, there are a lot of benefits to uh, local scale buying. So there's a lot more freshness, uh, there's more variety, there's a local economic impact, there's a lot of potential nutritional benefits and community benefits, as well as environmental impacts around things like uh, reduced carbon footprints. Um, and an example of kind of one of those benefits is something we saw during the COVID pandemic, where there were a lot of shortages of food that was coming in from abroad or from other parts of the country due to uh, logistical issues. But if you uh, if you were purchasing locally or if you purchased from the you know the farm in your county or within your region, it was a, a lot easier to get a consistent access to produce during that time. Uh, so with with that importance on local considered. Uh, I'd like to shift over to farm to school. So farm to school in general has been a growing market for farmers around, around the state and around the country. The movement is growing, especially in California. It's an accessible market for small family farmers, which make up 90% of farms and 24% of agricultural production. And California alone purchases, California schools alone purchase $170 million dollars from California farmers. So there's that real tangible economic impact that can be created with family farms through school districts. And because of the range and scales of production for family farmers and the range in size and demand for school districts, there really is a right farmer to fit each school district and their needs. So a couple of ways uh, to go about actually purchasing um, through uh, local producers is rather uh, purchasing directly through farms. So that could be done uh, by directly contacting farms and CAF can connect school districts with farms directly. This is a great opportunity to support local farm economies. There's opportunities around field trips and educational experiences. Um, and another option is to purchase through food hubs. These are regionally uh, regionally focused uh, and mission-driven mission aggregators, and CAF can connect your nutrition services department with a food hub in your region. Um, so as many, I, I think as many of the food service and procurement folks on this call know, there's kind of three ways that school districts go about procurement, or three tiers. So according to USDA regulations, um, uh, Kind of the first tier is any purchase below $50,000. Uh, you can essentially purchase from whoever you want. You don't need to do any public solicitation process, but you do have to rotate the farmers that you purchase from or the vendors that you purchase from. There are a lot of benefits for that um, that I'll discuss in a second here. Anything from $50,000 and above, you may have to, you'd be required to do an inf informal procurement process where you reach out to three vendors and get quotes from those vendors. Um, and whoever provides the lowest price is then awarded your contract. 
and there's some ways to procure locally through that. And last but not least is the request for proposal process. And that's for any contract above $250,000. Um, and that is a public openly bid, bidded on uh, process. Uh, but as a school district, you can incorporate things like local geographic preference, um, uh, har uh, farm, uh, farm, ed uh, farm education, harvest of the month, and other criteria that'll make sure that you get a vendor that will be able to provide you with local products and farm to school products and farm to school educational material so that you can then uh, support family farmers through the RFP process. Um, so I'm gonna give a couple of quick examples here on um, how to go, go about each of these categories. So the micro purchases are one-time purchases. Uh, they're up to $50,000. Um, you can purchase directly through farms for that through that process. And uh, if you would like, you can actually connect, uh, CAF can connect you with uh, farmers in your region that you can make a micro purchase from. If you reach out to me over email, like give me a call, I can support you with that. Um, and this works well for like one-time purchases for a harvest of the month or an educational activity or a taste testing or any promotional events, things like that. Um, and it also comes in very uh, comes in handy during emergencies. Let's say you're missing a certain product or um, you know you need to get something on a short notice. Uh, micro purchases are a really great tool to fill in the gaps where needed. Um, and I, I discussed some of those benefits there. Um, uh, but here is an example of a micro purchase that uh, CAF has facilitated uh, recently. We worked with um, Denise Pena at South Monterey County Joint Union High School District. Um, and she was looking to do a promotional event. The food service director there was looking to do a promotional event for the California Crunch, which is a local, uh, which is a statewide program to celebrate local uh, California products. Um, so we were able to connect her to a food hub to do a micro purchase. And uh, she was able to serve it, provide educational materials. We developed some know your farmer signage here, highlighting the farm and the product. Uh, the product. And uh, it was a very smooth process for her to get local produce into her uh, cafeteria. Uh, the next tier up is called an, uh, a three bid and a buy or an informal purchase. This is anything from 50 to $250,000. In this case, um, the uh, the contract goes to the lowest uh, the lowest bidder, um, but there's actually a way to do to work around uh, work with that. So, uh, for this process, you have to reach out to three uh, vendors, and those three vendors are the only people that can respond to your RFP. So, a good way to try and get local products through this process is by reaching out to three vendors that you know have local products. So, maybe three uh, local food hubs or three regional distributors that you know have local products or really value farm to school. And then the lowest price would be then, would then be awarded the contract. Um, and last but not least, uh, kind of the largest scale um, procurement process is the request for proposal. Uh, and this is a formal bid solicitation where uh, you would put together your, your really detailed item list of all the products you would like and it, it is then uh, released publicly for any vendor to respond to. And um, the way we work on this to try and increase local procurement is by incorporating different standards in the scorecard. So unlike an informal process, informal bid, where lowest price wins the contract, uh, this process is an opportunity where you can put in different scoring criteria to get the right vendor to meet your needs. So you can put in points towards like nutrition education material, towards marketing support, towards the ability to provide uh, field trips or farmer visits, towards local geographic preference, and a whole other uh, 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 list of ways that you can incorporate prioritization that will then in turn support local farmers and ensure that your uh, distributor has local produce. Um, uh, so just before we wrap up here, again, uh, if you're looking for local products, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. We can uh, work with you on developing an RFP that prioritizes local. We can connect you with food hubs or directly with farmers to make your purchases, and we can help uh, facilitate that process for you. Um, 
And before we wrap up, or before I wrap up, um, I wanted to mention one other interesting program we have or that ties into wellness. Uh, CAF is starting our Farms Together pilot program in partnership with Fresh Approach and the California Association of Food Banks. And the goal of the project is to incorporate more uh, local and small scale pro uh, farmer produced uh, products in California uh, food banks around the state. So if you're interested in learning more about that project or uh, how to, how to uh, partner with us, or if you just want more information, feel free to check out our website there at calf.org slash farms together. Um, thank you so, all so much for, um, for, for taking the time to, to listen to our presentation today. And I wanted to wrap up on one more note. Uh, you can reach out to me or the Farm to Cafeteria program CAF, at CAF at those emails below. And if you ever do make a local purchase, whether that's through CAF support or not, feel free to reach out to us and we'll make some customized signage highlighting your farm and, uh, and the products that you're serving in the cafeteria. Uh, thank you all again for, uh, for being a part of the presentation today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Yusuf, for kicking us off and sharing more about farm to school and local procurement. I will now hand it off to Janelle. Awesome. Thanks, Jamie. And great job, Yusuf. That's a great leeway into what I'm going to be talking about, which is kind of more on the farm to school side with the education piece. Once you have all of Yusuf's delicious fruits and veggies on your cafeteria, then you get into some of the programming that I do for farm to school in our district. So hello everyone, my name is Janelle Manzano. I am the Farm to School Program Specialist with San Diego Unified Food and Nutrition Services Department. I also sit on the School District Wellness Council and co-chair the Health Education Subcommittee as well. Um, in this presentation, I'll be talking about some of the Farm to School programs that I help support my team in and then um, do on my own to kind of amp amplify our nutrition education programming in our district. Forgot that I could do my slides. Let's see. There it is. Oh. So a little bit about San Diego Unified. We are the second largest school district here in California, right after LA Unified. Um, we serve over 200 school sites here in San Diego, mainly public schools, and we also have been to some charters as well. Um, of course, we through food services, we are practicing universal meals for their breakfast and, and lunch programming. Um, here are some stats of our um, meals um, throughout the school year. Um, Cumulatively, we do about 22 million meals per year. These are a little different because these are pre-COVID data, but generally we do um, over 20 million meals per year. Definitely keep in mind how large our district is. Um, we are lucky to have a big team in our food services department where we have a farm to school specialist. I'll talk a little bit about our culinary specialist and even a love food, not waste program. So just keeping that in mind, I know with medium and small districts, directors might be wearing multiple hats and um, you know, have to gauge what, what they're able to do in their district. So a little bit about myself. Um, I graduated from UC Davis in, back in 2017 um, in clinical nutrition. Um, after graduation, I served a one year of food court, which is an AmeriCorps program where I was a garden and culinary teacher in Oakland, California. I'm not sure if someone has a question or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did one year of food court in Oakland, California. Um, and through my food court connections, I was able to get connected with San Diego Unified. Their former farm to school specialist was leaving. Um, and she was a food court alum. And so we, I was able to come to San Diego Unified and become their part-time farm to school specialist as well. Um, because I was part-time, I was able to pursue my master's in public health at UC San Diego. So I tried to stay local because I love this job so much. Um, and then in 2021, after I graduated from my master's program, uh, I became full-time with the district, which is really exciting. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about that journey of farm to school and um, my journey of how they were able to make this position full-time. Um, in the next slide, which is kind of a little bit, an overview of the history of farm to school here in San Diego Unified. So here um, you'll see that we started farm to school back in 2013. Um, we've always had one or two full or part-time farm to school specialists within our department, um, either paid through food services or you know, support funding through some grants. 
Um, we also always had a, at least one Food Corps service member at that time as well. Um, this team really focused a lot on the procurement side of things. So something that you would, you know, contact Yusuf and CAF for is getting the local produce as part of the school lunch menu. Um, we were able to get salad bars and um, to all our school sites, um, start Harvest of the Month programming. Um, we started a program called California Thursdays with the Center for Eco Literacy as well. Um, we also started programs that connected with school gardens, like garden to cafeteria or cafeteria to composting. And then, of course, we did a lot of nutrition education as well and providing services for our teachers and our um, district community. Fast forward, um, I joined the team in 2018. Um, again, part time farm to school specialist, and I continued a lot of the programming that my predecessors have already started. Um, through that, by 2020, we went from one to two food core service members. And by 2021, we received the CDFA Farm to School Grant, which was really amazing. Um, it, it was um, the, the thing that pushed me to become a full-time Farm to School Specialist with my district. Um, and right now um, I'm, I'm funded through food services um, in this position now too. Um, through that CDFA grant, um, we went from two to four, and then next year we're even moving up to five food corps service members, where with two of them being able to help me at the district level. Um, it's nice to have a nice team to help me out with all these 200 school sites that we serve in San Diego Unified. With the grant as well, we're expanding some of our programs to um, include more resources for teachers and events for the community, uh, and I'll be talking a little bit about that in the next couple slides as well. So there's three elements to farm to school, procurement, education, and school gardens. I really try to focus my work around these three core elements. Um, I feel like anything that my food team gets on those menus, if locally, it's locally grown or procured, I wanna make sure that I am able to promote that and educate that to my students um, in different and variety types of ways. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, First, local procurement. Um, like I guess mentioned, we did an initiative called California Thursdays. We expanded that to a new initiative with the Center for Eco Literacy called the California Food for California Kids. So we're not just procuring uh, fresh local fruits and veggies, but we're looking into local California chicken, California bread, California milk. Um, I was just at Fresno last weekend and looked, was looking at California beef that we hope to add onto this map in the future as well. Harvest of the Month is one of our biggest um, local procured um, programs that we do. As many of you might know, Harvest of the Month is a new fruit or vegetable. We mainly do fruit here in San Diego um, that's unique to our students, always grown by a San Diego or a California farmer. Um, and we do a lot of tastings around this and education programs for this as well. Um, these are pretty unique types of fruits from kumquats, persimmons, um, pluots, caracara oranges. We got apricots for May. Although with the rainy and cold, um, oh, someone's controlling my slides. Um, with the rainy and cold weather, um, our apricots aren't ready th today. They're like I think they're like two weeks behind. So unfortunately, we don't have our apricots ready for us because of the cold California weather lately. So as I mentioned, um, I will help out my food team. They get a lot of that food on our menus, um, whether it's a chicken, whether it's our harvest of the month fruit. Um, and we do a lot of training and education for not just our students, but for our staff as well. We have a culinary specialist, Chef Juan Zamorano. He's pictured here um, on, our, on, on this slide. Um, he's hosted culinary boot camps and summer trainings for our staff, both in person and providing videos for our staff to kind of learn how to use the fresh ingredients that they're getting in the cafeteria. He's also done some awesome great student demos so that we can get a sense of what the students um, like or don't like or get them excited what's going to be on the menu. We work with Lunch Assist and Center for Eco Literacy to also help us provide professional development for our staff as well. And then we also have used kit funding to um, modernize our kitchens, get new equipment in there because with, again, with new fresh ingredients, we want to be able to have the right tools in the kitchens to be able to cook up all those delicious foods. So my realm is definitely more in the nutrition education side. Um, like I mentioned, I have a background in clinical nutrition. Um, and so I focus a lot of my services to the students to help promote all the amazing things that my food team is able to do, like Chef Juan and our dietitians. Um, so I'll go over a little bit some of the nutrition education that I do. Um, first, we provide um, presentations, like assemblies and classroom presentations to students K through 12th grade. Um, we also provide presentations to the community to talk to faculty and staff. I sit on several um, working groups within our county to talk about farm to school as well. I'm out there in the cafeteria a lot, doing taste tests. 
Um, I connect with our STEAM department, our culinary teachers and wellness coordinators to help bring them the resources, let them know what's on the menu, let them know what's um, gonna be the next harvest of the month so that they have the resources to incorporate that into their um, lessons. Something new that I'll talk about as well are these family barbecue picnics that we've been hosting um, this school year as well, that's new. So here are just some photos um, that kind of show the nutrition education that we do, along with in-person assemblies and, pre and classroom presentations. I also host a monthly 15-minute nutrition class. It's that top left corner right there. So students in classrooms across our district are able to learn about Harvest of the Month produce with me on Zoom. It's a quick 15-minute class, so anyone in our district can tune in. Again, we're such a large district, I have to be able to scale up programming and after COVID, Zoom's become a pretty convenient way to get everyone together. So um, this morning I had about 30, 35 teachers in a Zoom room um, with their classes sitting on the carpet and it was so adorable and we learned all about apricots. Um, other resources that I have for teachers include a cat, um, culinary taste kits and um, harvest of the month taste kits where um, they could rent out from us in food services and they could taste our harvest of the month fruit or do a culinary class. And depending on grant funding, I'm able to provide um, the ingredients for their classes as well. Um, this is a picture in the middle right here. That's a kumquat vinaigrette that the students at Mira Mesa High School culinary team, I sent them our harvest of the month kumquats. I send them fruit every month and they make some delicious um, dishes with the harvest of the month fruit. Um, on the right hand side, you'll see some of some pictures of our Cali Q events. This is brand new through our CDFA grant. Um, we host family barbecues. Each school site is able to request one barbecue, um, at least this school year. Um, and they were able to invite the families out and they get a little taste of farm to school and what and learn what that is in San Diego Unified. Um, that's a principal over there. That was our first barbecue. Um, and he was out there telling the parents over the microphone what farm to school is and what food services is doing to bring in local fruits and vegetables into their school lunch program. With that, we also hand out um, the fresh fruits and vegetables that they'll see on the salad bar. We hand that out as a little simulation farmer's market stand at this event as well. This is just a little bit of an, um, you know, what our Cali Q logo kind of looks like. With nutrition education, again, I can't do it alone because it's such a big district. So I do rely on community partners to help me out as well. I've worked with Health Kids Happy Planet, which is a great program um, that promotes beans. Um, I work with, again, the STEAM Department and Health Corps, which are departments in our district. I work with this County of San Diego Health and Human Services. Um, they help promote some of our school menus as well through their nutrition educators. Um, working with the state at the Farm to School Network. Um, we have a county Farm to School Collective as well. And then I also work with the Dairy Council to provide some education too. Um, next month is Dairy Month, and I'm actually working with um, with our Dairy Council um, representative to get some dairy um, gift cards out to our teachers so they can learn along and get some dairy products into their classrooms. And then we'll do a little 15 minute class on Zoom for that. Of course, the last tier in Farm to School is School Gardens. Um, I just wanted to mention that, yes, we do provide school garden programs so that the school gardens can connect with us in the cafeteria. Um, and then my biggest thing is that I want to work with school garden educators so that they help promote um, promote our school food as well. I tell the story a lot, and maybe you've, maybe you've heard me say it, but one time I was sitting in a school garden class and they were harvesting amazing, beautiful carrots from their garden. They were like purple and yellow and orange. And the garden teacher was like, aren't these carrots more amazing than what you receive on the school salad bar? Those baby carrots are awful. And I was just like a little heartbroken because that's not the language we want to use around our students. A lot of them rely on school meals um, as, you know, as, as a way and an avenue to get fresh local produce as part of, you know, an everyday life, five days a week. So I spoke with other garden educators and I connected with them. I provide a lot of my garden educators in my district um, cases of our harvest month fruit. I send them out and they help me do tastings in the garden and they utilize that fruit to promote um, what they're getting served in the cafeteria. And just giving them the language and the tools that they can help uplift the school cafeteria and we help uplift their school gardens as well. So it's a good combination. Lastly, we do have a Love Food Not Waste program. This is kind of more on the food rescue side. We have a team that helps with um, composting, green bins, and um, incorporating green teams as part of student engagement as well. So yeah, that's a little bit about San Diego Unified. I think I'm Alexa, I just thank you. Um, thank you all so much for listening. I hope you, you know, reach out. Let me know if you ever need help with nutrition education and programming and things like that and ideas. 
I'd love to brainstorm. So yeah, I hope you enjoy and I'll pass it on to the next speaker. Awesome. Thank you so much, Janelle, for the snapshot of what's going on in San Diego Unified. It's really great to see the connection with local procurement, school gardens, and nutrition education. So to keep us moving along, I will now hand it off to Amanda. Sorry, have to unmute. Um, hi, I, I have to figure out slides. Sorry. Okay. So, um, there we go. So how, I'm Amanda Harvey, Nutrition Services Director of Fresno Unified. Um, and that little girl is me, <laughs> shoving my face full of ice cream. Um, the, the second picture, I am making a sandwich. Apparently I was very proud to be able to make my own sandwich that is homemade bread in there. I did not make that. Um, and then, <laughs> don't comment on the outfit, but the next one is a little fridge door. So apparently, my mom got a large fridge with a little fridge for snacks for me. So I, I asked for pictures of me stuffing food in my face as a little kid. So that's what we've got here. Um, so a little history on me. I, um, I was a child that went to school when there was vending machines and I thoroughly enjoyed Nutter Butters and Cool Ranch Doritos and Dr. Pepper and ice cream, as you can see from this photo. So somehow I grew up into a nutrition services director, a wellness champion and all things wellness. Um, I learned the power of food for preventative me medicine. Um, I went to school for dietetics at Fresno State. Um, I spent several years managing hospital kitchens, and I, I discovered that I, I really wanted to be able to make changes in the early parts of life instead of more towards the end of life. Um, so I, I started, um, I looked into child nutrition programs, and I, I decided to join the third largest school district in California as my first go at school nutrition. So um, that was a huge learning curve for me, but it was very rewarding and, and just such, such, um, so, um, so meaningful. This work is extremely meaningful. And um, so I, I was in 2015, I joined Fresno Unified as the nutritionist. And um, when we closed schools, I took over as the director and just been running since. Um, so a little bit about Fresno Unified. We are the third largest school district. Um, in California. So we are right behind San Diego. Um, <laughs> it's, it's great to hear kind of some of the challenges that Janelle has because, you know, larger school districts, we do have different challenges than smaller school districts. So it is, a, um, it's fun to hear sometimes uh, uh, someone bigger than us. So thanks, Janelle. Um, we do have 72,000 plus students in our school district. We have always been um, community eligibility provisions since not always, obviously, but since 2014-15. So, um, so that's been a, a, a benefit for our staff and our students and our community. Um, we have over, we have 108 serving sites including a couple county and charter schools that we, we partner with. Um, we have over 500 nutrition services professionals that work, work in our department. We serve over 12 million meals annually. That is a, a, quite a decrease from pre-COVID numbers. Um, we were doing about 17 million meals annually. So we still have, um, I, I can't wait to bring us right back up to um, where that, that's a, a significant gap. So we're, we're working on increasing those numbers. Um, our breakfast, we do about 22,500,000 breakfasts a year, 8 million lunches, 500,000 snacks, after school snacks, and 1 million suppers a year. Um, and then our local, we all, our fresh fruits, we are the largest recipient of the fresh fruits and vegetable program for several years in a row. And we, um, that menu is entirely local. Um, and we define in, in our district. So I, I saw there's a, a question in the chat around like, what is the definition of local? And it, it can be, it's, it's loose and it can be um, defined by the school district. So we define that as 250 miles from our nutrition center. Um, and so that's 25,000 individual pieces of fruit and vegetables, local fruit and vegetables served daily through our fresh fruits and vegetable program alone. That doesn't even include fruits and veggies in the, the um, breakfast and lunch programs. And those last couple of pictures, those are our students eating our, I'm not sure how to reverse the slide. Can someone reverse the slide for me? 
Uh, so that is a, um, this little girl, she's enjoying our local um, raviolis from a local um, producer. And that is a scratch made um, sauce that we make here at our nutrition center. And that dinner roll is a scratch made dinner roll. So um, we do try to do local and scratch made as much as possible. Um, so how, how have we turned our nutrition hubs into, uh, how have we turned our cafeterias into nutrition hubs? So we have multiple nutrition programs. We do, um, we do breakfast, lunch, supper, we call it super snack, supper, um, our after school snack. And we also have our fresh fruits and, and vegetable programs. We also have, we've introduced nutrition education, um, I'm going to be talking a little later about several executive chefs that we've added to the team and food pantries. So this last couple of years, thanks to our CDFA Farm to School Incubator Grant, we have um, really increased the nutrition education that comes out of our department. Um, we, we used to kind of, you know, that was we handle the food curriculum handles the the curriculum portion but we really wanted to enhance um, what we what we can offer in the cafeteria and how much nutrition education we can provide um, it, while they're just in the in the cafeteria so we um we created these we have a um these posters that are gracing our cafeterias they they coordinate with a, a taste and teach program and our after school program. Um, and there's a commodity of the month. So every month there's a different commodity, the poster, there's a newsletter. We try to align that commodity with, um, with menu items, with our fresh fruits and vegetable program so that the students can taste, they can learn about it in the classroom. They can learn about an after school program. They can read about it on these beautiful posters in the cafeteria, and then they get to try the, the food as well or see it incorporated into a recipe um, in their, their breakfast and lunch. We also, thanks to our farm to school grant, we have um, this this um, next two, we're hiring for a farm to school coordinator. So we will be connecting with Janelle to learn all about the amazing work that she's doing over there. And then so excited this upcoming school year, we have, um, we are adding on an internal executive chef um, and then also a contract with a brigade um, company for nine executive chefs. And so we really want, um, to focus our executive chefs to focus on um, presentation, quality, increased scratch cooking, um, student taste testing, really involving our students in the, the choices that we make, being really intentional and student driven with every menu item that we, we add. Um, and then also staff training, you know, really, really elevating the quality of our meals and our, our staff's ability. Um, we do have uh, seven regions in our district, and so each, there will be an executive chef to each region, and then we'll have two executive chefs here at our nutrition center to really expand our um, our cook chill and our bakery, because we do have a, a large cook chill and bakery operation down here, so we'd, we'd like to um, expand it and, and really work towards introducing local um, seasonal items and much more, again, much more scratch cooking. And then we also have several to, again, add, um, you know, how to, how can we make our areas uh, a nutrition hubs? You know, we, we have several partnerships with um, community partnerships. That's, my slide's a little off. So community partnerships should be on the top. Food pantry should be on the bottom. That is my fault. Um, so we have, you know, several community partnerships that have introduced things like food pantries, school pantries, backpack programs, um, and then farmer's markets. That's something new that we're going to be rolling out next school year, our farmer's markets um, at, at our school sites um, so that we can, and that's part of a, a CDFA actually our specialty crop block grant. Um, so they'll be highlighting specialty crops at our farmers markets. We'll be doing student surveys to learn what they like and then seeing how we can incorporate them into our school menus. Um, and I will, that completes my presentation. I'll pass it over to Emma Jean. Great. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate it. This is great hearing about all the great work that uh, everyone is doing. 
let me advance. I Okay, there it goes. <laughs> great. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here and just hearing this great conversation has been completely just awesome. Um, my name is Emma G. Nelson. I'm with Fresno Metro Ministry. I'm the new executive director. At Fresno Metro Ministry, we focus on food insecurity, food waste management, and food education and nutrition. And just saying how I got here to Fresno Metro Ministry and why I'm here, it is that um, I like well, a lot like Amanda. I experienced um, extreme food insecurities when I was when I was younger as a child, growing up into childhood, being so hungry that you're not hungry anymore. And school lunches saved literally, not figuratively, saved my life. Probably that was the place I um, I went to get to get food, and it was nutritious for me. Um, at Fresno Metro Ministry, we have um, several um, programs, which I'm talking about here shortly, but through those programs, we're funded with um, various, um, we collaborate and partner with um, several funders. Uh, one of them is the Rite Aid Healthy Futures Foundations, the CDFA Specialty Crop um, Grant. We have we are building our uh, Saint Rest Food Hub, which is going to be a six thousand square foot um, food hub where we're going to be doing food recovery, distribution, and education mm -hmm. there, which we have several. Um, funders that um, that are partnering with us to make sure this is um, the food hub is built in the heart of a food desert and in our 93706 area code and then also we have been uh, we have some funding coming from and we partner with our great Fresno Unified School District where we're going to put on our very first garden to fork camp we're so excited about that because the only thing we can think about is the camp and the kids jumping up and we're going to be having a great time around nutrition so um that is and then one of our um, programs we have, I so said we have four. The first one I want to talk about is our food recovery and distribution um, program, where to date we have actually recovered 8.5 million pounds of edible and healthy food. This food we have picked up from various donors from the Fresno Unified. We picked up from warehouses, retail stores. We actually even do gleanings. We go out of a, of a, if a orchard calls us and say we have um, 49, which is un not uncommon, 49 trees. We go and glean those trees so that we can um, take these, um, take the foods in. And what we do is we have five vans and five drivers. We start off with an empty van in the day. We end with an empty van at, in the evening. And so we are, we have multiple routes we go to on a daily basis where we pick up the food and then we take the food to various community centers and churches and pantries where um, they are able to supply the food to the to the community and in this process of us providing the food to the community we found out that the food that they were receiving they really didn't some of the food they didn't know what to do with it and how to cook it or what was the nutritional value of it and so as as we're communicating and connecting with our community. And after learning this, we said, oh, you know what? We need to bring on some cooking and nutritional classes, which is our Cooking Matters classes, which is a six week. We expand it now to seven weeks because we want more time with our community. And it's a, it's a nationally acclaimed cooking curriculum where our team come in, it's, in a, it's interactive, they, it's a turnkey program where we come in, I call our Cookie Matters team a 007, they come in and they have, they bring pots, pans, food, plates, any, everything, you can, you just name it. We just need an area and some running water so that we can wash dishes and wash hands. So we come in, we, um, we do the cooking skills and we you can see the kids on this on the screen that they're learning how to use a knife properly they're learning all the um, nutritional value how to cook a nutritional meal how to read labels how to even cook on a budget so they're learning all these different aspects of cooking and they're learning how to um how to try different foods we always tell them that don't ever say you don't like anything. Let's just try it. And they have tried out so many different um, 
different um, foods that they hadn't tried before. And what I love about this program is that what they're um, they're talking, they're learning in the school, but they're going home and they're sharing with their parents. So we look at this as generational because now the parents are coming back to us. They're like, oh, wow, you know, this is one of the broccoli soup. We tried this, they had us try this broccoli soup and we went bought broccoli and we love it too. So they're, they're, they're learning the learning to cook healthy and learning about the nutritional value because we're teaching them my plate, um, how that works and even moving up to the parents. And right now we are in actually at the Fresno Unified School site where um, this past year we have um, educated probably about 270 um, kids and in the after school program where they they absolutely love it and they want more. Um, we also do local CDOs as well. We go and do the same turnkey program. We're teaching the healthy eating, how to cook on a budget and um, how to cook min, uh, meals in 30 minutes. But when in our after school and our communities, we provide them with a free bag of grocery. Each participant get a bag of groceries that they get to go home and duplicate that recipe. So to make sure, you know, they're under that they're understanding and they have the meal to actually cook that. Um, then we have our next one, we have our community garden, which is an amazing space. It's a seven acre garden that, um, grows healthy organic foods and it is in within our it's in our community we have we have it right in the midst of our one of the highest foods desert deserts in the nation and we have 250 on this particular plot of land we have 250 um community garden plots where they come in learn how to cook i'm um, how to cook <laughs> how to grow um healthy organic meals and also learning how to communicate not to how to connect with their with their neighbors because what we found out with the garden because it's built in the midst of a neighborhood that they're learning now who their their neighbor is and so it's no longer Longer, you have to kind of be afraid it's like oh now you know your neighbor and you guys are communicating and connecting and that has to do with mental health and physical well-being they're out there in the gardens and they're learning to connect they are connecting with their um, community and then we also have the Yoville Healthy Kids Program which we're taking kids from the Fresno Unified School District and we're bringing them to the garden, we transport them from the school to the garden where they have an amazing time. They are enjoying themselves. They're in the soil. They're learning how to plant. They're learning that carrots are not just in the store shelves. They actually are grown in the dirt. And so they are learning all these um, various things, how to, um, how to, about food sustainability and um they're learning about farming as well they connect they get a chance to talk to the farmers ask our farmers questions so that they will um be more engaged and another thing that i re really love about this program the kids are really rave about is that we give them a snack they're getting their snack during the during their program time but whatever they don't eat they put it into the compost pile and so whether they say well what happens to this pork we haven't put it in there. So when they come back the next week, they're learning about what happened to that food or to that item that is, that's um, being, it's in the compost pile. So it's helping them understand the whole gamut about, you know, gardening, composting, but also about food waste and how, how when you put things into landfills, what happens when, but when you put them into compost, how you can reuse that, that dirt to help them grow even more food. So they absolutely um, love it. And they actually, in the, comp in the compost, I have to say this, they named the worms. It is the cutest thing ever. <laughs> So, and now we have um, our other program is a food security network where um, we um, help guide research and create resources, support our food policy council. And um, with the food security network, it is a residence driven um, priorities where we've con connected with the community, finding out what does, what do they believe are the needs that um, of the community of the, as around food insecurity. Uh, we have a foods, we're piloting right now with urban footprint of food security insight too, is helping us horn in, where should we do our cooking classes? Where should we do more cow fresh outreach? How do we go, how do we um, get into the community to understand the need of the community? So it's helping us horn in exactly where we need to be. And our food champion um, 
program, which we uh, we we host at actually in Fresno during the daytime, other classes are in the afternoon. This is during the actual class time. The Food Champion Program is an eight week program and it meets learning objectives within six core curriculum areas. So it has an actual curriculum and we're teaching the kids building behavior skills and they're learning about healthy food access, food waste prevention, um, and food stewardship, economic development and local healthy food economy, community participation, patient, how do they, where do they fit into this food system and how they become advocates. So it's this, we look at our food champion program, it is a really a gamut to cover all of our, the cooking skills, our gardening, because it talks about all of that and how, um, how the whole food ecosystem work and where they can fit in. So thank you for that is the last, the last of our four programs I'm presenting here. So thank you so much for your time. Wow, thank you so much, Amanda and Imogene for sharing about the amazing work going on in Fresno. I actually grew up in Fresno and the schools I went to were in Fresno Unified. So I have a lot of love for Fresno and the Central Valley. Um, but yes, thank you to all of our speakers. I would love to open the floor up to questions that our participants may have. So feel free to come off of mute or type into the chat whatever questions you would like to ask either to a specific speaker or to all four. Hello. Hi there. Hi, I had a question about the last presenter. Um, how receptive was the was the um, district when she presented the food the food classes? Was that a, a really a high energy type um, environment, or was it is a, a slow going process to get everybody involved? Sorry, um, it um, <laughs> excuse me. It was it was really high energy, and the, I, let me take that back. When we first first started, it was you know with any kid, there was they're like, what is what are they doing? But now as we got into it, we had our we had a pilot <laughs> few weeks, but now it's really high energy. They absolutely they are love it and loving it. And our biggest problem right now is that we can't well, only so many kids we can take in a classroom because of you know safety reasons. We use knives and burners, but yeah, they they actually are loving it and it's it's very receptive. David, was that, was that your question? Yeah, may I ask, I'm sorry, I might have missed it. What grade level were you doing this class with? Oh, we, we do fourth through sixth grade right now, which we're going to be going into the high schools. We do leadership in high school, but we're doing the cooking classes fourth through sixth grade. May I be able to reach out to you uh, if I have more questions? Oh, definitely. I'll put, I can put my email in the chat right now, if you like. I really appreciate that. I'm, um, you really piqued my interest um, and the energy that you provided us that just really got me excited. Um, I right. really appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Oh, no problem. This is teamwork makes the dream work. Definitely teamwork makes the dream work. A lot of the, a lot of what people were speaking about today included partnerships, right? So it's great to see people extending and reaching out to each other. So Imogene, your email is in the chat and also um, everyone's, all the speakers email addresses are in the PowerPoint, which will be sent out after today's webinar, as long as you're signed up for the newsletter. Um, I do see that someone has their hand raised. So Sarah, if you'd like to ask a question, then feel free. Um, I have a question for Janelle. Um, I was interested in your family barbecues um, that you were able to do one at every school. Do you, are you doing that at their like back to school nights? Or are you doing it during the regular school day and just inviting parents to come to lunchtime? And is that something you were able to fund with like CDFA grant funds or, or something like that? Or how, how did you do that? 
Yeah, so it was, we relaunched that this past February, and it was kind of a first come, first serve for school principals to sign up for. Um, it was a program we had pre COVID. Um, it was a Western themed barbecue instead. But yeah, t principals sign up. Um, they were granted like one or two events a year. Um, this year, because we just started in February, we were just kind of slow launching it. Um, we did it three times a week at, at different school sites, and we were booked out. Um, Pre-COVID, before I had the grant, we had our, our own barbecue team within food, our food services department. So they were in charge of running these events. And they weren't during back to school nights. They were during the school time, during the lunch period. And so the principals would go out and um, invite their parents to come eat lunch with their students. And then our event would be happening there. Um, now it's the farm to school themed. And that's kind of where we're kind of moving that direction towards. Um, but yeah, right now, what the CFA grant paid for is like the edu kind of the revamp of the new theme um, and the educational pieces that we've included into the event as well. Um, our catering team, we have a catering team in my food services department that helps um, run these events because we bring out a grill and we have service who kind of do a buffet line. Um, but we also ask that the principal brings in a lot of parent volunteers as well. Did, did you fund the, the meals for the parents though through the CDFA grant or did the principals pay for it or how how did you how did you pay for the um, of the parents to to be able to participate? So it's free for the students and then the parents for adult meal it's for it costs us four dollars. Um, sometimes we'll see principals pay for their um, the faculty and teachers on that school site, but typically parents come up and um, pay four dollars for their adult meal and then we provide a la carte items as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, it looks like we have a hand raised by Rashid. Rashid, would you like to ask a question? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'm Rashid. I'm with uh, Community Alliance with Family mm -hmm. Farmers. Uh, Yusuf is my, my uh, co worker, uh, I'm senior manager with Farm to Market. Uh, this question uh, is uh, for Amanda. Hey, Amanda. How you doing? Um, I, I'm wondering about uh, the onboarding process for farmers uh, and uh, that, that want to work directly with the district um, and also any food safety requirements uh, that would need to be met in order to uh, work with the district. Yes, so um, so we have, that's all through our procurement team. So they do have, um, guidelines, there is insurance requirements and food safety requirements. Um, we do, I have been working with our, our executive director of purchasing on how we could do like a vendor workshop for, for our small farmers in how, not not a vendor, but like a, a workshop on how to onboard them and, and how to get more engagement with our, with our local farmers. And that's also a, a goal of our new onboarding of our farm to school coordinator as a, a task for them as well to help build those relationships. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we have a question in the chat from Tina. Tina says, hello, I heard about compost sites to help with food waste. Has anyone addressed rescuing edible foods from the lunches? As per State Bill 1383, how is the food waste reduction and edible food recovery happening at school sites? How is the data collected? I can talk about that because our, our friends at Fresno Metro Ministry help us so greatly with that. With that. Um, thank you, Imogen, for that partnership. We, um, we They do a food to share program. So they're actually in a, a large portion of our school sites and they um, they carry, you know, we have an MOU with them and they carry the, you know, all the liability and everything that they need, uh, the food safety requirements. Um, they take our food and they have the partnership with recipient agencies to distribute our, our um, leftover foods or, or food waste. And I'll, if Imogene, if you want to share anything else that I might have missed. No, no, I think that is that was perfect. And in this, and they talk about the compost for things that we that we get and that may have went bad. That's part we take to our composting site, and so it makes you sure it's all used. I answered a little bit in the chat through the reply method, um, but yeah, I, I briefly mentioned it in my presentation, but we have a team called Love Food Not Waste. It's 
a team and a program in food services. Um, and that's their focus is trying to find um, avenues for our edible and uneaten food from the school meal programs that could be sent out to food banks. Um, we had a strong partnership with a lot of our food banks pre-COVID, um, but we're still trying to regain those partnerships um, right now. It's been hard to reconnect with them. I um, wish we had Imogene and her group <laughs> down here in San Diego that could help us out. Um, so we're slowly building up that program again. Um, and then we also have a cafeteria to compost program where we can train um, school gardens who are interested to do composting on their school site. So they would get um, they would have student leaders in their garden club or they have a recycling or a green club to pick up food scraps from the cafeteria. And then they could bring that into their school gardens. And then I provide training and resources for that along with their Love Food Not Waste team. Um, I know that a lot of our cafeterias are getting trained and receiving their green waste bins right now too in their cafeterias. Serena asked, does anyone know if there is a sample MOU out there for working with entities that we are wanting to donate leftover foods? I can see if my Love Food Not Waste team has um, language around that, if that's something that's of interest. Serena, feel free to email me about that program. And then Aaron and, asked, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, if you feel free to go ahead and email me as well, because we have different um, agreements. We don't call it quite MOUs with other organizations. We have agreements where with different organizations to say if they have to comply with certain um, things, making sure we get only healthy food. So they can't give us, we're not, we don't take like soda. We won't take those kind of things. And we don't take things that are bad. <laughs> so we have a little agreement that we um, line up. So feel free to, to connect if you know if you want. Okay. And then Aaron asked, what is the process slash certification for getting food from gardens into cafeterias? I think they're talking about like garden cafeteria programming. I was like, still on the compost side. I'm like, garden to cafeteria, cafeteria to compost. Um, I also have language around that. If you want to see what we did um, in my predecessors, you know, back in that 2013 timeline I was talking about, um, they worked with Master Gardeners and our County Department of Environmental Health to kind of develop our safety protocol. Um, there's some good protocol examples on the Life Lab website as well, but I could also send um, our protocol and a lot of folks have used the language and similar practices that we have in our protocol. So happy to share that as well um, to start your own garden cafeteria program at your school. I'll drop it in right now, actually. I have it open. <laughs> Yeah, just paying back on what you said, Janelle, Life Lab is a great resource for that. Um, you can also reach out to the CDFA Office of Farm to Fork team. Um, and then uh, there's an, another, there's some other school districts that you could reach out to directly to their food service departments to get some ideas. But uh, you might want to try talking to Michael over at Morgan Hill School District because they've been doing something really interesting. They're growing a lot of lettuce uh, in these actual like converted hydroponic uh, containers and they've been figuring out ways to try and buy that you can use they're using their procurement procedures to incorporate it in their meal service so if you also want like want me to connect you to any food service departments that are already kind of doing that uh, garden or garden to fork procurement I can connect you with some folks uh, that might have some insight but life lab is probably a good good first step Thank you. That, yeah, that would be great. I am working with our nutrition services, but um, I have we have a hydroponic farm on our campus. And um, right now we're trying to just figure out our next steps and like how to kind of build that out and be able to get it just from like, who wants food today? And like, you know, giving it out to actually being able to serve it in the cafeteria and get into the hands of our community members. So 
yeah, whatever resources you have, because I, I know that for my district, this is the first hydroponic farm that we, we have. Um, our other schools have some gardens that they're working with, and um, we are trying to do both the outdoor soil garden and the hydroponic garden. And we've got like tomatoes and cucumbers and um, peppers and, and lots of lettuces and all of that growing, but we need to be able to actually serve it. So I just, that, that was kind of like, what do I need to do? And, you know, that way I can come to the nutrition services more informed because he actually directed me to this webinar. And so I was like, okay, I'm here, but now I'm like trying to figure it out. Thank you so much. Erin, I just linked um, my Garden to Cafe training folder. So it has all the resource, resources, not just the, um, our protocol, but it's also, there's some language in there for um, hydroponics as well, garden stands, and then cafeteria to compost. So you could play around with that folder. And Tina asked, are the contracts with farmers requiring re sustainable and regenerative farming practices? Um, yeah, so what you can do uh, as far as sustainable and regenerative farming practices, it really depends on which practices you're looking for. So, or, sorry, I, I jumped into that question. So if, anyone else, if anyone else has any insights as well, I'll try and be quick. Um, uh, so uh, you can include organic as like an item, as a, as a descriptor of an item, and that's, that's, that's one way to try and get uh, sustainable products, depending on, you know, if you consider organic kind of the, uh, your, your main goal, um, you can actually include that in the line item of the product and require the product to be organic. This is how you require a product to be, you know, cut in a certain way or, or what have you. Um, as far as other regener regenerative and sustainable pr farming practices, rather you can go the micro purchase route. And you know, do your own research, find farms that um, would meet the practices you're looking for and make micro purchases directly for them, from them. Or the other option would be to include those sustainable and regenerative practices in the evaluation criteria for your RFP. So when you're going out for your large RFP to purchase the bulk of your produce and select the right distributor, you can actually put in your scorecard and your evaluation criteria. We want a certain amount of farmer, we want to source from a certain amount of farmers that practice this and this and this and that. You know, you can actually list out those practices. Um, and then ideally you would end up awarding that to a distributor that meets, that can source from those farms. So depending on what practices you're looking for, if you're just looking for organic, you can require that in the item description. But if you're looking for other practices, um, you might not be able to actually require them. You might just only be able to include them in the scoring criteria, depending on what those practices are. So if you want to talk a little bit more about that, that's actually something I'm starting to research a little more. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Great. Thank you, Tina, for that question. And thank you, Yusuf, for your response. Frank asked, can we get the job descriptions for your executive chef positions? I want to hire a chef for our schools as well. This is probably for Amanda. Yes, I will add it to the, to the chat. Great. Thank you, Amanda. All right, as we are wrapping up the webinar, feel free to add any last minute questions. And if you think of any afterwards, you can always reach out to any of our speakers for more information. 
So one of the things we wanted to provide you with was some resources that we have to share and that are available. Um, there is one from Alliance for a Healthier Generation that is used to map resources, to, resources and tools to support food access. Um, this is available for community food resources for students, families, and caregivers. And then there is a 2023 Summer Meals Toolkit that has information on uh, free flyers, nutrition education, activities and enrichment for, um, for Summer Meals this year as you begin to prepare and ramp up for that. There's a ton of stuff from CDE such as Universal Meals, Farm to School, and Food Pantries in Schools. And then there's a couple from Community Alliance with Family Farmers, such as a big generator for schools wanting to create any RFPs and farms together for connecting local farmers and food banks. And then lastly, I just wanted to um, thank all of you for attending our webinar. Feel free to keep in touch with us. Uh, there are a number of ways you can visit our website, which has a lot of resources for wellness policy. We also will have recordings from this webinar and any previous webinars. There's the local school wellness policy triennial assessment template, and there's a list of statewide partners. You may also sign up for the newsletter, um, especially if you would like to receive this recording and the PDF of the presentation slides. Um, and we're always open to people joining the collaborative as well. So thank you so much for attending and a big round of applause to our fabulous speakers. Thank you, Amanda, Yusef, Imogene, and Janelle for sharing your, your time, your energy, and your wisdom with us.